what is going on my good people man this is your main man ben here and today we got another mic reviews i must say this would be my end game in terms of podcasting somewhat voice over and my daily driver on my solo podcast let's check it out Today guys, we're gonna talk about two microphones, fantastic microphones. I must say it's one of the best in the industry. If you're talking about long-term goal in podcasting voiceover, these two microphones are, I must say, the cream of the crop for pro level without overspending. Again, without overspending. We are talking about the Rode Procaster, my daily driver for at least 70 episodes. Amazing Rode microphones, man. Australian microphones are amazing. I use this. Um, we got a Rode right here, a little shotgun mini mic, and my go to Rode NT1 for voiceover, audiobook, and other stuff with regards to bright crispness and quality. Overall, Rode is amazing. Now, the other hand, I admit this is the first time I have used the Electro Voice and I was debating on the RE20 and the RE320. That being said, I was able to get my hands on the SM7B. I know they're different, but um, somewhat, I must say, I kind of like the brightness and I went through the little brother, the RE320. Now, let's test it if I made the right call. So what we have today, guys, is this two awesome dynamic microphone. Um, I'll post the link in the description later. We're not gonna go with the specs. We're gonna go right over to the nitty gritty of these things. But we are recording, as you can see, at the pod track p8 both of them as much as i can is in the correct and proper level there's two right here one and three they are at the same level as much as i can that way we have transparency on the actual test okay like what i said i have the road procaster for at least a year now yeah a year 70 plus episodes recorded in this bad boy and what i can tell you about this the signature um is just fantastic in my voice i like it it's not too muddy it's not too bright it's just perfect balance by the way this is um pod track p8 we have an onboard processing happening in here and we are activated in that method and on top of that, guys, the PSM1 is so affordable. By the time that I bought this microphone, I got the PSM1 at an open box in Amazon for $10. But it retails now at $39. Not that bad to hold and, you know, support this type of microphone. Let me do this real quick just for references. You cannot hear the tud in here. If you touch this body right here, you, you would understand what I'm saying because I'm going to do the same thing here. And amazing, amazing shock mount for the road value and what it gives. I'm going to tap on the desk. That would be the wood part. This would be the mat part. Barely anything. If you're really talkative and if you move a lot in your desk, that would be critical. But other than that, guys, all metal body, 10 years warranty, signature of this microphone, there's a reason why it is amazing. But hunting on that perfect, because everybody got different tones and voice, this is what we got for the Rode Procaster. We're going to switch on the RE320. Now we are in the RE320. This microphone will retail around $299, but you can get away with, you know, reverb or other sweet waters, um, $250, $230 used. Sometimes they got sale. Amazing microphone. 
built wise same as this guy right here i think this is much more heavier though but ev has been in the industry for a long time fraser has it for 16 season the re320 which is the big brother of this guy right here and um I, I give you my two cents real quick. The tone of this one is a little more brighter. If you're a guy that does not want to process your audio, like, you know, go into Audacity or any software that you use to edit your audio or post-process it, right out the box, this guy is fantastic. On top of that, there's a switch underneath for a kick drum mode, which is... A curved one no that was for voice and the flat one is for kick drum so this is a dual purpose microphone if you're a musician you're gonna benefit for other usage of this one and I have heard things and seen it as well it respond amazing on acoustic guitars or anything that would relates on recording with the microphone musical instruments and the most important thing that I like about this is I'm, I don't know if it's really effective, but as far as I can tell, I have recorded one episode in this guy, the Variable D technology. What it does is the proximity effect. Now, proximity effect is how far you are, sorry, <laughs> how far you are from the microphone's diaphragm and the source of that sound. Variable D technology somewhat cheat everything in that method. You see all this gills in here what it does basically is when you talk a little closer right now the microphone should be a little louder because the proximity effect is being engaged since you're talking closer to the diaphragm of the microphone if you pull away technically it does not change so if you're you know a noob or um, i don't want to say noob but if you move a lot like this then you would benefit on the variable D technology because the sound source remains the same. Signal is the same. And that being said, that's, I would say, the main selling point of this microphones, of course, aside from the look, that's subjective because a lot of people doesn't like it, but that would be the main thing for this microphone, okay? We're going for the cons. This microphone runs a little hot meaning it's brighter, it's much more sensitive, and both microphones, by the way, is susceptible to plosives. I have run this Procaster for 70 episodes using a big filter, a metal or a mesh, either way. It's shown into my podcast with that big metal grill. But really, I don't want to cover my face in it because I do run a video podcast as well. So I got this little plastic thing with an Haken filter in front of it to use and not, you know, block my face, you know, but you can get the much more expensive ones for like $50 or I would say 75. I don't want to put that kind of money on a filter where else this plastic filter, you can get it for 15 bucks and the Haken filter, you can get an aquarium uh, uh, sponge filter and does the same thing. And I'll tell you what, I got a link there, guys. Check it out. This does wonder for catching those plosives, those amazing plosives. You see that? Plosives, 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 plosives. You can see that effect. But other than that, I use this to remedy that sudden burst of air on any of these microphones. Now, which one do you like? Um, let's do a quick test. I will run both microphones unprocessed and processed just to see if you like now we're still talking at the re320 we're going to switch back to the procaster and we are back at the procaster this is going to be like what i said um the the limiter the low cut and the tone is being engaged in the pod track p8 we're not going to process this anymore in audacity because that would be a different ball game its preference but i just want to give you the actual tone of the microphone process and unprocess so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove limiter low cut you can see that that voice um tone and the com compression and de-esser 
By the way, this is going to be the unprocessed version of the Procaster. This is the actual sound of the microphone that if you take out of the box, this is how it sounds. So we're running a little bit of uh, uh, the level are the same, you can see, but you can hear the tone is not that perfect. So onboard processing, if you have a device such as the Podrack P8 or the Procaster, Caster Pro would help a lot in your podcasting realm or in your podcasting game. Once you engage everything, this is how it sounds like. So you can you can hear the difference of the tonality outside the box in the process version. On top of that, if you're still not happy with your, you know, process version, you can go to Audacity, you have a WAV file and process it from there to refine a little bit more. But this is going to be a straight up approach for us. Let's go to the EV. And we are back in the EV, guys. We are going to turn off all the processing. And this is going to be the EV out of the box. You can see there is no processing out right of the box. This is what you're going to get on the microphone. That's what I say outside any processing. If you don't like any processing, this microphone sounds amazing right out the box. If you like that type of thing, I think don't go in to get the RE320, the bigger brother, for $459. If you don't like processing, you don't want to study it, this is the one. We're going to engage the processing now on the onboard uh, um, thing for the PodTrack P8. And this is going to be the process method or the one that is running to the PodTrack P8 connected to our RE320. Let me know what you think. Okay, final thoughts here, final thoughts. Um, it's nice to have choices when you record or you know go into determine which microphone fits in your own voice. Everybody has different you know tones. Um, you got probably your pitchy voice or you got warmer or lower voice, you know, it really depends. But looking for that type of signature of microphone can be tricky. If you want to go like really safe, I would say go get the Procaster. Um, this has been a workhorse, amazing microphone. This is not going anywhere. It's going to get stashed in my microphone cabinet and that's mine forever. Plus 10 years warranty in this bad boy, you cannot beat it. Now, if you want to have a little sparkle, I must say a condenser feel microphone with an attitude of the uh, uh, dynamic microphone, which is very forgiving on background noises such as then get the EVRE320. But there's a caveat here, guys. I did not invest on its shock mount filter because the shock mount filter almost the same price as when I got this awesome microphone. Yes, it's $100 for that shock mount. And I do have a, a shock mount here um, that fits on the EV that I used to use on my Audio-Technica AT2020 condenser microphone. But it's really not that effective, I must say, because when I tap the board on the table, you can hear that. This one did not have that, you know, bad tap. And in the mat of the table, very sensitive. What I'm saying here is that if you want to get the perfect microphone, you have to have a compromise. Now, I like the signature of this one because I can play better because it has that airy feel and that um, I would say the higher frequency is amazing. It does feel like a condenser microphone and a dig on that one. So overall though, it really depends. There is no one way answer if you like this or this, but if you ask me, I'm keeping both. They're amazing. I'm going to use this mainly if I got a lot of guests. This is going to be my main microphone. And for the solo studio, like in, you know, this place, um, I think I'm going to keep this EV320.
But overall, guys, I hope I was able to pitch in and help out on which one to get. Always remember, though, God is good all the time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.